If you haven't done so yet, please pause the video and try to solve this question on your own before listening on. We're going to consider an equation from kinematics first. Now here's an equation that we learned back in physics 1 in the kinematics unit. And in this situation, we have a ball that's being thrown straight up. It reaches a maximum height, turns around, and comes right back to where it had started. We can see that if we marked this spot, the initial, and the return spot, the final, that its overall vertical displacement would be zero. So we're going to plug zero into this formula. Now we were given the initial velocity that the ball was thrown with as well as the time of its flight. So we can plug in those values in order to solve for the acceleration. Now of course to solve for acceleration we'd have to multiply these two terms first. And then on the other chunk of terms we have to square the 4.1 and take half of it. We'll subtract both sides by the 82.41 and then we'll divide both sides by the 8.405. And we get an acceleration that is indeed nearly the same as the free fall acceleration on Earth as the question stated. So this is a value that we can probably hang on to and use later. Our next goal will be to calculate the maximum height that the ball achieves. So we're gonna look at this part of the motion right here. We'll call the initial position here and then the final position here. Notice that the final position, the final velocity would be zero meters per second because the ball momentarily comes to rest up there. We can turn to this equation from kinematics and try to solve for the vertical displacement of the ball, which again is going to be that maximum height that the ball achieves as it reaches that highest point. So we'll subtract v naught squared from both sides and then divide both sides by 2a. We'll plug in zero for the final velocity, the initial velocity was 20.1, and then the acceleration we just determined. And when we compute that, we get approximately 20.6 meters. So that will represent the maximum height that the ball reaches in its flight. Now really, so far this has all been sort of preliminary information. We're going to consider a free body diagram of the ball as it flies upward through the air. Now it turns out there will be two forces acting on the ball. There's the downward gravitational force, which is mg, and then there's the downward electric force that's equal to q times e. We want to explain where that's coming from. Well, we have to remember that the question states there's a downward directed electric field. And we know that when we put a positive charge in an electric field, it will automatically experience an electric force that points in the same direction as the electric field. Positive charges have electric forces that point in the same direction as the electric field. That is a very important statement. So Fe, we recall, is equal to the charge multiplied by the electric field. And that's where that downward QE force is coming from. Now Newton's second law says, of course, the sum of the forces equals the mass times the acceleration. We have two downward directed forces, so those forces will be negative when we plug them in. Now we're going to go ahead and try to isolate the electric field and so maybe the first thing we can do is multiply each term by a negative one. That way this will become positive, this is positive, and that changes to a negative. We could then subtract both sides by mg and then divide both sides by q. We can now plug in the known values for the mass, the acceleration a that we calculated earlier, g, as well as the charge. Notice the charge is given in microcoulombs, so we'll have to multiply that by 10 to the minus 6 to put it in the standard unit of coulombs. We've come over here to show the work just because we were running out of room over there. When we calculate the magnitude of the electric field, we get approximately 1.95 times 10 to the power of 3 newtons per coulomb. So that's the electric field strength on this planet. The question though wants the potential difference between the starting point and the top point. Well let's recall that earlier we calculated the maximum height that the ball reaches. It was delta y is equal to 20.6 meters. We know that the potential difference between two points is equal to the electric field multiplied by the distance between those two points. Well, we just got the electric field, and we earlier found that distance, so we can plug those two values in to get the potential difference. And when we calculate that, we get approximately 4.02 times 10 to the fourth volts would be the unit for the potential difference. If we wanted to convert that to kilovolts, we just remember that one kilovolt is a thousand volts. And so when you perform that conversion, you would get approximately 40.2 kilovolts. So if you need to report the answer in kilovolts, that would be correct, or in volts, the other value would be correct.
Thanks for taking the time to watch the video. If you liked it, please subscribe to the channel so you could stay tuned for additional videos. Also, you are welcome to send in your own question to the email address on the screen, and I will do my best to provide a video solution on YouTube.